Alright guys, time to go back again today. I hope you all did well and enjoyed your day so far with the CDL reminding us of some of the best moments of the Call of Duty Black Ops Card War season. Method is certainly implying he may well be returning for CDL 2022 to a starting roster in the league. Very much enjoyed. Take your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. It is free after all at the end of the day. This firstly, as Macamore points out, he's an absolute legend with that world <laughs> pointing me in the direction of stuff that may or may may not happen on the timeline. But uh, yes, this was noticed yesterday, because um, a seam is at this Los Angeles Grillers facility, or at least was to record this piece of content, which is um, he kind of like reacted to his teammates and best plays throughout their careers. So Gunners' best plays, Hook's best plays, Slash's best plays. Pretty good YouTube video they put out, right? Great to see a Los Angeles Grillers trying to compete on many fronts, not only putting together what seems to be a very competitive roster, but also trying to do some content and stuff. It's just fantastic to see another team stepping up to the plate. And um, hopefully one of these other organizations that comes in will try and do a very similar thing and Methods of course could be a good piece for that given um, you know, what he's done for the content side for the scene really the last uh, 12 months or so especially but um, as you can see right here kind of interesting it seems in this Los Angeles Grillers facility seemingly and a big question mark right now around LAG that was last season coming into this season as well is what's going on with their um, well where they're located for the upcoming season because we saw last time that um, they had a lot of issues really and they didn't really talk about it too much but uh, guys like Slasher certainly talked about it during Modern Warfare when it everything had to go online, the fact that the servers were not ideal for players based out of California. Now, Los Angeles Grillers last season, I'm pretty sure they were based at maybe the same facility or somewhere else in the area, or maybe like um, they were just living in their own apartments or whatever, but in LA, and that meant that practicing from you know, from California wasn't ideal, and also playing on the servers, like um, I think it was better this past season in Cold War than it was previously in Modern Warfare, but still far from ideal. I don't, well, that's really why most players are in Texas, right? So Asim is out here at this facility, also at the same time seems to visit the Los Angeles Thieves or the 100 Thieves compounds with them um, the Los Angeles Thieves banner on the wall. This is also based in LA, I'm pretty sure. And he was also with Zoom, as you can see right here, helping, you know, set up his stuff as he's been moving out to LA the last couple of days. So, um, seems like this uh, Los Angeles Grillers compound is in LA, which of course you would expect. But uh, will, well, will Los Angeles Grillers be based out there again, right? Because that could be a downside, especially for a guy like Slasher. He was um, very frustrated, of course, joining this Los Angeles Grillers team now. He's very frustrated on OG LA back in, um, back in Modern Warfare that he was stuck out there in Los Angeles and um, the practicing was difficult right even if this season is all on LAN and if it is it's probably going to be somewhere in Texas anyway they, they do the LAN environment stuff so um, why would you need to live in LA anyway if you're going to do that but even if it is played online it's probably going to give you something of a disadvantage anyway so I'm sure the Los Angeles Grillers players are lobbying to get some sort of um, you know some sort of house in Texas or whatever kind of like how Los Angeles thieves have done and uh, given the money that LAG have behind them maybe that'll happen but uh, yeah definitely something to be hinted at here from a scene most certainly this then that the COD League come out with yesterday. Throwback to stage one. Pretty ridiculous to see that um, during stage one, like you could argue that Methods is one of the, if not like the best player on uh, Toronto for a time. He was at least up there. Like he was putting up decent numbers. I don't think he was doing anything spectacular. But um, Toronto as a whole was just not a particularly good team back in stage one. They swapped Methods out for insights, and all of a sudden they become you know, this absolute god squad. It, it took them some time right through stage two. They eventually win stage two and go on to not place outside top three for the rest of the season and make a load of grand finals. But Methods in stage one. This is um, the first 1v4 of the season of only two of them. And uh, well, he gets a pretty nice 1v4. This is, um, you know, some people were saying this kind of summed up Paris Legion's season in a way. Because uh, the, the overchild there from Scraps just didn't really make any sense. The way this clutch plays out here for Method is just... um you know, pretty tragic for the Paris guys. Of course, it's not the most impactful 1v4 in the world because they're already at 5-0 in this map. And Moscow Search and Destroy, of course, where they continue to be very good for the entirety of the rest of the season. And um, of course, Methods uh, makes this one at work pretty nicely with not too long on the clock. Not really sure what Classic's up to there. And this is kind of funny from Aqua, to be honest, as he, um, you know, Methods is kind of burger walking around the corner and Aqua gets bad timing and decides to get out of there. It was a chaotic 1v4. But uh, anyway, that's what happens, right? And then people were saying maybe he, he should have got the Flanks Award for the best player of the season for something like this. But as he says in the reply right here the emoji comes through the soon emoji comes into effect returning it particularly to a lot of people pointing this one out to me because of course methods has been hinting lately there has certainly been some hints about this washington spot that maybe that's a well the destination for methods especially what he's done lately on the content side i'm sure he'd be a great piece to build around to be honest because there's not too many of course there's a lot of great main assault rifle players from the pro scene but also the challenger scene but if you see seattle building around a guy like accuracy 
then certainly that says to me that Mithras could well be deserving of a spot here back in the CDL for next year. Thought this is interesting actually from Rad11 Stance, kind of commenting on this one. This is one of two 1v4 clutches this season out of 684 total attempts in this situation. If you are left in a 1v4, the probability of clutching based on these um, kind of a 2 out of 6 to 4 is 0.3% and this of course is one of them for Mithras. Makes it a bit easier when your opponents decide to over -chat. but you're not going to clutch a 1v4 if people don't make mistakes. The other one was this actually from, um, from Shotzi during a May sometime that uh, people maybe a little bit forget about, but this is absolutely ridiculous. Not sure what oh, uh, that was scum actually, not sure what um, happened there. This was the thing from Envoy, like, I don't know what that over chal was. It's, um, this is the thing, you don't clutch a 1v4 unless uh, people are making some pretty significant mistakes, and I'm not really sure what Optic are doing here with this session destroy, but anyway, Shotzi wins the 1v4 this time. I'll probably show this maybe on the big screen real quick at the end of the video, but um, yeah, these were the two 1v4s on the season, but of course there's some big question marks right now if Methods is returning to league as he is implying, where exactly does he go? So there has been some talk of course lately about this Washington group coming in apparently there's two organizations or at least like two ownership group potentials that want to come in and buy this Chicago spot off NRG Washington could be one of them certainly that's been hinted at right from out from the method side that he could be going in a direction like that but this also a big discussion to be honest from, um, from the complexity side whether these guys are the other group coming into play we saw recently Tim the Tapman of course join complexity and there has been some talk about um you know trying to make something happen really in terms of you know maybe joining other organizations other leagues and stuff like this and complexity of course have been very much an OG in the Call of Duty scene space. Now um, of course this would make a fair bit of sense. We see this right here from Jason Lake, the founder and CEO of Complexity with Hex here in the background maybe discussing some sort of potential deal where um, you know maybe of course uh, well Hex right now is kind of maybe an ownership of that Chicago spot at least for now but uh, soon it'll be NRG property I imagine if this Optic Dallas thing goes through as we expect it to and then of course uh, Jason Lake and the Complexity guys could come in and buy that and maybe that'll be the competition that what that Washington Washington Justice kind of ownership group have for their potential spot they want to move to Washington. Now where would Complexity move the spot to? I don't really know. But um, of course a legendary organization in Call of Duty history. Haven't been around for a while for some of you guys newer to the scene. But uh, these are, well, a couple of clips here from back in 2013 this is. Where, um, you know, Optic, this is of course the classic full sale. But um, yeah, this is where Complexity were the best team in the game. They were very difficult to stop. Crim6, TP, Aix, and um, of course, well, Clayster is on the side of the team right here. But Akama, even uh, well after that happened and... Um, you know, just dominating really Black Ops 2, winning the World Championship in it in Call of Duty Ghost, of course, and um, that was the era of dominance that they had there. Then, of course, uh, things fell apart. Well, they go to Evil Geniuses, the rest of this team, to kind of cap off the dynasty. Then the Optic Dynasty happens, but then they come back a few years later, right into World War II, before they change their um, logo. I kind of have a soft spot for this one. Nowadays, they've got that kind of star thing going on. But um, I found this real quick, an insane round 11 with the Game 5, with Complexity coming away with the win over E United GG. So pretty ridiculous. This is when Dashi was on the team for complexity, and um, they certainly had a decent eye on talent because they had Dashi, they had Doug Sensor Martin over here, they had Blast, they had Ricky. I mean, what a crazy squad that was! But um, yeah, well, he doesn't have the sleeveless jersey on, so Doug wasn't at his full form. But um, yeah, still, this is what complexity were up to a couple of years ago. Then they kind of fell out of Call of Duty, didn't really work for them after the franchising came into effect. And uh, yeah, just a legendary moment to be honest. I think this is the one, yeah, it is. This is where Priscilla hits the um, it's the chair. So um, yeah, if you guys have seen that before, then it's certainly a cracking one. But anyway, complexity could indeed be making the return, it's not out of the realms of possibility. This also also from Red 11 stats I thought was pretty interesting. Search and destroy kill records for each Cold War map throughout the entirety of Call of Duty Black Ops Card War. On Miami it was inside with 18. I'm pretty sure this was his first ever series for Toronto. He goes game 5 against like Los Angeles Thieves or something and um, he drops 18 kills and somehow they lose the map. I don't know what like they were doing to manage to lose it. Honestly like it was Los Angeles Thieves trying to throw it away. Like inside had a couple of 1v3s that they were just gifting him kills for free which is kind of outrageous. Hydra had 17 on Moscow. I think like this was um I can't exactly remember what this was, but I think it was something crazy where like in the game two, Hydra had like three kills or two kills in search on map two. Then it goes game five and Hydra drops like 17 or something. So I think that's what happened there. Then Express was Crimson. He was a dominant force on, on Express, to be honest. It is kind of interesting. Like you would think really that um, you know some of these OG players that have played back in, for example, Black Ops 2 on maps like Express and Standoff that have come back from previous titles, maybe their, um, their kind of advantage on those maps would erode quite quickly over time. But it seemed like Crimson, to be honest, like ever since Express did return in and destroy. He was um, he was a dominant force on that map. Standoff goes to RC's actually with 15, despite uh, the fact that right when that map came out, it wasn't looking so good for FaZe. They lost, I'm pretty sure, the first couple of times they played it, or at least the first time. And Checkmate, it's RC's, BZ Awakening, and Hook all with 14. And on Raid, six players are tied at 14 kills. But again, the record for the season at 18 for Insight. Not too bad. Not quite touching the, well, the overall records that Dashies hit at 20. I'm pretty sure Shawnee's hit 20 as well. Both of those were off stream. And then Crimsix has the record of 20 from way back in Sovereign 
win, search and destroy in Call of Duty Ghosts. I think I'll do a video on the Breaking Point GG channel about that one in a, well in the near future. Given we were talking about Doug Sintomartin on that complexity team, just wanted to finish off with this. I thought it was funny for the fact the OG black glasses, two icons of the Call of Duty scene. Who wore it better? Doug Sintomartin here on the left. Renato Forza, that being Saint, of course, on the right hand side here. This is honestly, this Saint one is legendary. Like the way these glasses look, it just cracks me up every single time. But Doug Sintomartin way back in the day as well was getting the job done. This is, um, you know, could even be way back in the Black Ops 1 days, I think, when he was like a very young indeed, but uh, won his first championship, I think maybe in Nashville or something, way back in the day. And um, of course, uh, well, careers and paths have changed most certainly since then. But very much intrigued to get your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. I'm really upset that you are going to know you enjoyed this content. I'd be like you may enjoy this content as well. And I'll grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. Now, He's in a mantle on top, but he is all alone. He's able to take down two, though. He makes this interesting. 25 seconds left. He's red this. He oh my God. Now it's a 1v1. Shotzi making the play for the ace. And the huge clutch. Can he get it done? 15 seconds to go. The plant never got in. All the pressure. To Dashi. He was a monster map one, but he can't do it here. Shotzi. What a round.